This is the procedure for the determining an equilibrium constant by spectrophotometry lab. We're going to react Fe3 plus ions with SCN minus ions, and the product will be FeSCN2 plus ions, which have a reddish color. Because they absorb light, we can use the absorbance from the spectrophotometer to give us an indication of how much of the FeSCN2 plus ion is present at equilibrium and that will allow us, if we do a rice chart, to figure out the equilibrium constant Kc for the reaction. The calculations are a little more complex than normal for this lab, so we'll start by talking about the physical lab procedure first, and then we'll get back to the calculations afterwards. And I'll also remind you at the very end how to use the spectrophotometer and, of course, demonstrate it again in the lab just before you begin. So part one in the lab, you take a test tube, which you can label test tube S, and in it you're going to mix 18 milliliters of 0.2 molar FeNO33. The nitrate ions are just spectator ions, so they won't be involved in the net ionic equation, uh, just the Fe3 plus ions will. Um, so it's 18 milliliters of 0.2 molar FeNO33, and I put the... 0.2 in red to make sure you're careful to grab the correct molarity because later on you'll use a different molarity of iron 3 nitrate solution for the other five test tubes. So be careful that you're using the correct molarity. Uh, you're going to mix that with 2 milliliters of 0.002 molar KSCN solution. Um, the K plus is a spectator ion in this case, so just the SE. SCN minus ions react. Um, so 18 milliliters of one and two milliliters of the other. Um, you, as always, when you mix solutions, mix back and forth using an empty test tube to make sure it's thoroughly mixed, and then get the absorbance at 520 nanometers. Um, you can write down that absorbance and call it A sub S. Um, so we now know that absorbance, and we're going to use that value A sub S in the calculations later on, and also very important when you're done with any of the test tubes in this experiment, uh, be sure it doesn't go down the sink, but instead goes in the special labeled waste jar that we'll provide for you on the instructor's bench. So part two of the lab, um, you get another five test tubes, you can label them A, B, C, D, and E, and you're going to redo the reaction that you just did, but with a different volumes of the different reactants uh, according to this chart. So the chart will tell you exactly what to mix. In all cases you're going to mix 5 milliliters of 0 0.002 molar FeNO33 so that's why again it's in red because I want you to be careful to use the correct molarity. Um, the amount or volume of KSCN will be different each time and so the difference so that you end up with 10 milliliters total will be made up with distilled water. So you'll have pipettes, uh, which I'll remind you how to use those in the lab to measure precise volumes. So you mix what you're supposed to mix according to this chart and pour them back and forth into an empty test tube, make sure they're thoroughly mixed, and figure out the absorbance at 520 nanometers. So I label these A sub N the N here stands for either A, B, C, D, or E, depending on which test tube you're using. Um, so now you know those values, so when you see them later in the calculations, you can just plug in the absorbance in the appropriate place. And again, all waste from these steps goes into the special waste jar. Um, before we get into the heavy calculations, uh, let me remind you of the usual dilution equation, since you're adding one solution to another, the volume's going to change. And because the volume gets larger, both of your solutions that you're mixing are going to get diluted. So um, the molarity of the diluted solution after you pour something into the initial solution is the molarity of the initial solution times the initial volume, and then divided by the final volume after you um, add all the other solutions that you're adding. So uh, you've used that a bunch of times, certainly in the Beer's Law Lab earlier this year, so uh, I'm sure you're familiar with that equation. 
Okay, so for test tube S, what we're going to do when we do the reaction, um, we are going to first have to figure out the molarity of the Fe3 plus ions, not what's on the bottle, but after you pour in the SCN minus ions and the volume changes, using the dilution equation, you'll see that the actual initial molarity is not 0.2, but it's 0.18 because the volume change. Uh, if we do the same thing for the SCN minus, the molarity written on the bottle is not accurate because as soon as you add the iron nitrate solution, the volume changes from 2 to 20 because you added 18 of the other solutions. So the real initial molarity before the reaction begins is 0 0.002 molar uh, because of the volume change. And of course, there isn't any FESCN2 plus at the beginning, so um, that's created in the reaction, so there's zero of that to start. So the reaction happens, and it turns out that because there's so much more Fe3 plus than SCN minus, there's going to be a large excess in the test tube. So because of that, we can assume that this reaction goes basically 100%, meaning it's going to keep going until the limiting reagent is completely gone. Um, so since the limiting reagent is SCN minus, that goes down to zero, which means that this goes down by 0.002, leaving you with a large excess, as we said. And using mole ratios, the FESCN2 plus created is 0.0002 molar. So basically the point of test tube S is to assume that the reaction happens completely until the limiting reagent is gone, and now we know the molarity of the FESCN2+, the reddish ions that are created, and we've measured the absorbance. So just keep that in mind that we now know that a 0 0.0002 molar FESCN2+, solution has this absorbance, um, based on our experiment for test tube S. Now we're ready to do the other five test tubes. We can label them A through E, and the data from these experiments will help us figure out the value of Kc for the reaction. So, uh, same reaction as before, but starting with different initial molarities each time. So, the molarity, the Fe3 plus on the bottle, 0 0.002, is not accurate because you added other solutions to it, and the volume changed. Each time it was 5 milliliters that you took out of the bottle and the total volume at the end was 10. So the real initial molarity is not 0 0.002, it's 0 0.001 molar for the Fe3+. Plus. Uh, for the SCN minus, the molarity on the bottle 0 0.002 is also not accurate because you added other things and the volume changed to 10 milliliters uh, at the end. So uh, what you're going to do is replace this question mark here because you use different volumes of KSCN each time with either the 5 for test tube A or 4 for test tube B or 3 for test tube C, 2 for test tube D, or 1 for test tube E. So that question mark's changed in each of the five experiments. So you are going to replace that, but that is now a known value. So MI, even though it looks like a variable on this chart, is actually known in each case, just by replacing the question mark there. And uh, over here, of course, the FESCN2 plus ions have zero molarity at the beginning before the reaction happens. So the ions on the left are going to go down by x, and the right, using a one-to-one -one mole ratio, is going to go up by x. So the Fe3 plus ions have a molarity of 0 0.001 molar minus x at equilibrium. The SCN minus ions have a molarity of MI minus X at equilibrium, and keep in mind that you actually know the value of MI in test tubes A through E. So if we come over here, to, we need to figure out the value of X before we can get KC. Um, turns out in each of the five test tubes, it's very easy. You just take the molarity 0 0.0002 molar, that was the molarity of the FESCN2 plus ions that were created in test tube S. And you multiply that by the ratio um, A sub N over A sub S. A sub S is, of course, known from test tube S. 
that's the absorbance of test tube S, and A sub N, you also know, that is the absorbance of each of these five test tubes. So the N here would be standing for A, B, C, D, or E. You would just plug in the appropriate absorbance from each of those test tubes. So 0.002 molar times that ratio gives you the value of X. So even though this rice chart looks like it's got a bunch of different variables on it, we actually, by the end, will know all of those, and we can come down here and figure out the value of Kc by doing our usual Kc expression products, FeSCN2 plus at equilibrium over reactants, right? Fe3 plus and SCN minus. Um, they're all raised to the first power because the coefficients are all one. Um, so do that for each of the test tubes, get a value of Kc, and take an average of your five values, and that's what you're going to report. Um, now let's take just a few minutes to talk about uh, the spectrophotometer, remind you of some key steps as you take spectrophotometer measurements. Uh, I know you're all experts from the Beers Law Lab, but uh, a little reminder can't hurt. Here's the list of things to keep in mind when you're calibrating the spectrophotometer. Uh, remember, there's a wavelength filter on the front of the machine over on the left side. There's two ranges. Uh, you want the lower range that includes 520 nanometers, so slide it over so that the range includes 520 nanometers. Then go to the top of the machine and turn the wavelength knob uh, until it reads 520 nanometers. Um, step three, when the spectrophotometer is completely empty, meaning there's no cuvette in there, no light is getting through, so in transmittance mode, if you use the left knob on the front of the machine, you should set it to 0% trans transmittance to let the spectrophotometer know that no light is getting through when there's nothing in the machine. Uh, step four, take a cuvette, fill it halfway with distilled water. Um, usual story, wipe off the fingerprints to make sure they're not blocking any light. Uh, and put the spectrophotometer this time in absorbance mode and turn the right knob if you need to to get the absorbance to zero. Um, and again, that's because Beer's Law says when the molarity is zero, meaning pure water with no solute, the absorbance should be zero. So now the spectrophotometer should be reading properly and you can simply take a different cuvette, fill it halfway with the solution you're interested in, wipe off the fingerprints, and it should be in absorbance mode from the last step, so just uh, stick the cuvette in the machine and you will know the absorbance of your solution that you're interested in. So that's everything you need. Um, once you have all the data, um, you should be all set. Just uh, follow the two previous slides for the calculations um, and report an average value of Kc at the end. So good luck and we'll see you in the lab.